In July of 1970, in keeping with the phasing down of Saturn Apollo launches, the Rocketdyne F-1, H-1, and J-2 engine programs were consolidated into a single Saturn omnibus contract. To ensure the maintenance of an effective launch support team, this contract provided for the retention and use of the engineering skills and knowledge acquired while developing the three Saturn propulsion systems. The continued investigation of the aerospike thrust chamber concept was selected as a task which would effectively employ the type of engineering and technical disciplines required for the Saturn program. Earlier programs demonstrated the high performance and altitude compensation characteristics of the aerospike and developed the use of segments and modules to form engines of any size. Later programs established design criteria and improved manufacturing techniques with emphasis on low cost. This technology was used in the Saturn task assignment to demonstrate a breadboard engine system with an aerospike thrust chamber and J2S running gear. This film reviews the major areas of fabrication and demonstration testing of this system. The objective of the linear testbed program is to advance the state of the art in design, fabrication, and performance of the aerospike concept. Members of engine systems and combustion devices utilized their LOX hydrogen experience to design the linear testbed aerospike thrust chamber assembly. The aerospike is a truncated spike nozzle where the primary flow of high pressure gases is exhausted from an annular type combustion chamber. The gases expand against the surface of the nozzle and then continue to expand beyond the nozzle surface, enclosing a subsonic recirculating flow field. The pressure acting upon the nozzle base contributes additional thrust to the nozzle. Turbine exhaust gases provide a secondary flow to the base region of the nozzle, further increasing the base pressure. As a result, overall nozzle efficiency is very high one of the major features of the aerospike concept. Another feature, altitude compensation, is provided by the outer surface of the primary flow, which is a free jet boundary. At sea level conditions, the boundary is compressed, increasing static pressure on the nozzle wall and base. As altitude increases, the boundary expands, keeping performance near a theoretically ideal variable area ratio nozzle. The basic design provides size and weight savings compared to the conventional bell chamber systems and, in addition, enables development effort on individual full-scale segments, a substantial aid in reducing costs. The initial development of the segment used in the present program was accomplished under an earlier NASA contract. Current effort has been concentrated on perfecting fabrication methods. Manufacturing services planned and scheduled the operations needed to fabricate each component. The cast liner, a key element of the combustor portion of the segment, was produced by the investment casting process at Hitchner Corporation. The cast liner includes the contoured hot gas walls, the side plates, and the early expansion zone of the nozzle. A one-piece investment casting was selected because of the tolerance control capability. The detailed dimensions of the coolant channels, which are included in the casting, and the surface finish can be controlled accurately through the investment casting process. The state of the art in investment casting was extended in casting size, complexity, and the ability to provide thin sections and narrow, deep cooling channels. Following build, the wax assembly is used to form the final ceramic mold or shell in which the casting will be made. During the dipping process used to make the ceramic mold, the first coating of slurry is of extremely fine zirconium material to ensure adhesion of a thin layer to the entire wax surface. 
Use of the investment casting process was possible because of the very favorable foundry characteristics of Narloy, the North American Rockwell copper alloy developed specifically for rocket engine use. The casting is poured with the Narloy at 1950 degrees Fahrenheit under vacuum conditions to ensure minimum oxygen content. Cleaning, straightening, and dimensional inspection are conducted to ensure that all coolant channels meet drawing requirements. The cast liner is combined with the injector faceplate as the next step in fabrication. The faceplate is cast narloy, machined to provide wall coolant channels and propellant flow paths. Electron beam welding is used to join the two units. Procedures developed through welding experiments ensure fissureless joints and produce the best crown and root surfaces. Uniform travel and beam power output produce less heat so that distortion in the parts being welded is minimized. This welded assembly is then prepared for electroforming of nickel to close out coolant channels on the outside of the liner casting. Rigidax a material specifically developed for use as a filler in the coolant passages during electroforming and manufacturing processes was selected for use. The cast segment design contains relatively small coolant passages which introduce the possibility of a restriction or clogging from foreign material. The reduced coolant flow in the restricted channel could result in wall overheating. To avoid this possibility, the rigid axe is left in the liner throughout subsequent machining operations. Preparation of the assembly for electroforming is completed by coating the rigid axe with a silver powder to make it conductive, enabling deposition of copper to take place. The use of a copper barrier between the region of hydrogen flow and the electroformed nickel was found in earlier studies to be one means of avoiding hydrogen embrittlement of nickel. The nickel plating which follows is completed in three steps. This low number of cycles was made possible by development of shielding techniques which minimized abnormal deposits of nickel. Interstage numerical control machining is done between the first and second cycles, ensuring a uniform buildup of nickel structure in the most economical manner. In addition to serving as a closeout for the coolant channels, the nickel acts as the load path for transferring the injector end pressure loads into the cast aluminum backup structure. The extensive use of welding eliminates bolted joints and seals, minimizing leak paths, reducing the cost for joint preparation and lowering weight. The injector uses a concentric element design. The elements are coaxial with liquid oxygen in the center post and gaseous hydrogen in the annulus. The single up-pass cooling circuit selected for the chamber allows use of a simple hydrogen flow circuit in the injector. The injector braze assembly consists of the stainless steel injector dome with 68 injector posts, each of which includes an oxidizer orifice. The 68 injector posts are brazed to the body in one vacuum furnace cycle. The posts are trimmed by electrical discharge machining ensuring clean, even ends without danger of damage or contamination. Electron beam welding of the injector and dome assembly to the completed liner assembly is facilitated by inclusion of an edge inlay on the injector plate. Completion of the combustor assembly is achieved by adding backup structure to the segment and injector assembly. They are sand cast heat treated aluminum alloy units. They support the pressure loads along the sides of the cast liner for the length of the segment between the injector and throat end. The extensive use of mass producible castings in the combustor provides considerable cost savings during manufacture. Additional cost advantages are realized since manufacturing mortality exposure occurs on relatively inexpensive small parts. The combustors are full-scale parts and are applicable to a variety of aerospike thrust chamber configurations. The linear type used in the present program places 10 combustors side by side and utilizes a tubular nozzle extension of simple construction. For ease of manufacture, nozzles are built in panels five feet long consisting of 310 tubes each. 
The tubes are joined together by the furnace braze process. Preparations for furnace brazing follow established procedures which ensure satisfactory bonding. Close fit of components, cleanliness, uniform distribution of braze alloys, and good fixturing are essential. After completion of the pre-brazing tasks, the nozzle is placed in a retort, which is sealed to prevent leakage. Air is removed from the retort and replaced with an inert gas. This prevents oxidation of the stainless steel during the brazing process. Two brazed units are joined together to form a chamber side of 620 tubes. The completed nozzle consists of an inlet and exit manifold, coolant tube bundle, and a series of structural hat bands that transmit nozzle wall pressure to the thrust support beams at each edge of each segment. The nozzle provides single pass regenerative cooling, preheating the liquid hydrogen coolant to a level where cooling efficiency is improved in the throat region of the combustor. The assembly is then hand brazed to the combustors. Rigid connections are made only at the weld joining lower manifolds of each segment to its neighbor and to the nozzle. Oxidizer is delivered to each side of the linear thrust chamber by a LOX manifold. It is a simple welded assembly designed to provide uniform flow distribution. Each end of the thrust chamber assembly is equipped with a tubular fence to prevent gases from spilling over into the central engine area, which would be hazardous and result in performance loss. Each fence is comprised of 40 tubes, which are furnace brazed in the same manner as the thrust chamber nozzle. For test purposes, the fences are cooled by water. The segment assemblies were designed for use with existing J2S components, including turbo machinery. As a first step in build of the test bed, the components were assembled with a thrust mount developed for the program. Packaging of components is identical to the J2S, with the sole exception of rerouting and modification of ducts. The turbine exhaust manifold, which forms the center body assembly, is a large manifold which accumulates and disperses the turbine exhaust gases as secondary flow into the base region. The first side was installed with the manifold assembly in position to facilitate alignment. Each side, with its 10 combustors, produces 127,000 pounds thrust at altitude, with the total thrust of 254,000 pounds approximating that of conventional J2 configurations. The test bed side design is a 100% welded or brazed assembly with no joints or seals, effecting substantial cost savings while increasing reliability and extending life. Installation of the second side was accomplished with the manifold assembly removed to provide access. Before final installation of the center body, it was fitted with a hot gas seal around the perimeter. The seal is designed to prevent primary and secondary gases from escaping upward into the central assembly. Development of a satisfactory seal was the result of a research and development effort to find a configuration that could withstand the anticipated thermal stresses without cracking, yet provide the necessary flexibility to absorb movement. Structural tests showed a waffle-type pattern to be most satisfactory, and later tests with sections of corners, the most critical area, sustained this finding. Assembly of the linear test bed was completed on August 16th with the addition of control and instrumentation lines. Shipment to Rocketdyne Santa Susana Field Laboratory was made the same day. The linear test bed was installed in test stand Delta 2B, which had been modified earlier to meet the requirements imposed by the test bed configuration. The linear aerospike nozzle is a near ideal aerospike nozzle with an expansion area ratio of 119. The contour design minimizes low altitude recompression shocks with an intended reduction in cooling jacket pressure drop, yet still produces near maximum high performance. Design analyses show that these minor variations in contour design would have an insignificant effect on performance efficiency during vacuum operation. Testing was initiated on September 16, 1971. Eight ignition stage and transient tests were conducted to develop a reliable start envelope. 
This series established operation and sequence requirements for repeatable ignition and subsequent fuel and oxidizer system transient conditions were determined. A detection system to confirm ignition of all 20 combustors was a significant development. In January 1972, a combustion wave ignition system was installed. It consists of a central pre-mixer which initiates a detonation wave for simultaneous ignition of all 20 combustors. Testing of linear test bed number one was completed on May 23, 1972. A total of 44 tests with an accumulated duration of 3,114 seconds of main stage operation was achieved during the test program. A significant accomplishment was the attainment of a 592 second main stage test. The 44 tests were run to map the main stage operational range of the linear test bed, including chamber pressures from 680 to 1250 PSIA and mixture ratios from 3.2 to 5.6. 25 of these tests used the combustion wave ignition system. All objectives of the test program were successfully accomplished. The linear test bed task has been continued with the fabrication and assembly of test bed number two. This test bed uses 10 combustors, which are arranged in two banks of five each. The combustors were fabricated with liner castings identical to those used on the first test bed. The primary objectives of the number two test bed program are to obtain thrust vector control data and to increase the understanding of cycle life characteristics and heat transfer capabilities of Narloy. Additional studies include base pressure evaluation, determination of optimum nozzle position for maximum sea level performance, and evaluation of the effects of secondary flow on overall system operation. An improved ignition system using the triaxial combustion wave configuration is being employed. By early 1973, 18 tests had been successfully conducted, ranging up to 300 seconds duration including dynamic hinging of plus or minus 16 degrees. Steady progress was made toward the attainment of program objectives. With the establishment of a high confidence level in the linear concept, remaining tests will concentrate on the evaluation of thrust vector control. With the skills retained for flight support and problem resolution, the feasibility of the segmented linear aerospike system concept was successfully demonstrated. By using the Saturn support team during periods between Apollo launches, the objectives to retain skills and to advance the state of the art in design, fabrication and performance were accomplished. <laughs>